Hi, my name is Philip Brown. I'm the Bearded Math Man, and I'd like to share with you how to factor polynomials. In particular, we are going to be factoring out monomials out of polynomial expressions. So this is just part one. Now, the WTF stands for what the factor? Because in algebra, whenever you get stuck, well, usually if you factor, life gets easy. So anyway, let's get started. <clears throat> To factor this, we have to find the greatest common factor between 25x squared and 15x. See, when we're factoring, we are doing the opposite of distributing. We have to figure out what number, which would go right here, would be multiplied by the binomial inside the parentheses, and after you got done distributing, you would get this as your answer. The other thing is, uh, we have to find the greatest common factor. See, 5 goes into both. So you could put 5 there, but you wouldn't be completely right because you could also put an x there. So you actually are going to need a 5x. So what we're going to look for is the greatest common factor of both terms. So the greatest common factor, well in order to do that we have to factor 25, which is 5 times 5. And factoring x squared, well that can get kind of confusing, especially if you're not very well versed in exponents. But x squared is x times x. <clears throat> Now 15x is 3 times 5 times x, and I went ahead and put negative 1 here because it's a negative 15. So the greatest common factor is going to be 5x. That's the biggest thing they both share. So 5x. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out, and that's what I'm going to factor out. That's what goes on the outside. Now what's left over from this 25x, which was our first term, is 5x. You see? That's why 5x goes right there. And then what's left over from the other is a minus 3. So this 25x squared minus 15x factored would be 5x times the quantity 5x minus 3. Now let's look at something a little bit trickier. Hmm. Now, here's how we know we're right. Number one, if I were to distribute this, if I were to distribute this monomial to this binomial, I would get right here 25x squared and here. 15x. That's how I know I'm right. I also know I'm all the way right because there's no common factors left between 5x and negative 3. So we're done. So let's try an uglier one like this right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this but I'm not going to factor it all the way down because when I look at it I see each term has a cube but just one cube is the smallest right here. This is q to the power of 1 and all of the all three terms have a uh, p but the biggest is, or the smallest I mean is p squared. So I am pretty sure that I'm gonna have a p squared and a q in my greatest common factor. And then looking at these numbers, I'm pretty sure the biggest number that goes into all three is nine. So I'm gonna factor looking for the greatest common factor and instead of writing out four p's or seven q's, I'm gonna write, uh, well, I'll do it just like this. q times q to the sixth. And the reason I wrote this way is because I've got a q over here, so that's gonna be probably the thing I can take out of all three terms. <clears throat> now the 90 is 9 times 10 and all that kind of stuff and here's the 27. So um, when I look I see they all three have a factor of 9 that I can take out. They all three have a p squared and they all three have a q. My greatest common factor is going to be 9 p squared q. That's going to be my greatest common factor. So that's what I'm going to take out of all three terms. That's what I'm going to divide out. And then you can see up here what's left over. The first term what's left over is 7p squared q to the sixth. 7p squared q to the sixth is what's left over. Over here from the negative 90p cubed q to the fourth, what's left over is negative 10p cubed cubed. Well, that's a mouthful. Anyway, and there's only three left over from the 27. So we're done. So our first term is negative, and it's going to make our life a lot easier when we start doing additional math after this factoring if we go ahead and factor out a, a negative 1 like this. So our greatest common factor is going to be negative 10x. Negative 10 goes into all of these numbers, and x goes into all of those. So that's what I'm going to take out. When I divide, when I divide 80 by 10 and 80x cubed by 10x, this is what I get. I get 8x squared. So that's what's going to go right here, 8x squared. Now if you're not sure how the exponents work, this is x times x times x three times, and this is just x. So those x's would reduce, make 1, and you're left with x times x, which is x squared. So x squared is my first term. Now when I divide 70x squared by negative 10, I get negative 7x. That's my second term. And when I divide negative 50x by negative 10x, I get positive 5. That's my last term. 
So you don't have to do all the factorization like we did on the other. You could do it like this, and you don't even need to write all these things out. In fact, when I do these problems, I don't write them out. I just think about it. 10 goes into 80 eight times. Kind of carry on that way. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If it was, you could encourage me to make more videos by clicking like and maybe sharing. And you could even subscribe to my channel. And please visit my website, thebeardedmathman.com. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you.